Matt Sluka. Ay vey. You've heard this story. Uh, Matt Sluka claims that UNLV assistant coaches made him a $100,000 handshake agreement to leave Holy Cross to come to UNLV, where he's been successful. He's a run-first quarterback. They're 3-0, and and he's played a huge role in it. That was until yesterday when the news broke that Matt Sluka accused UNLV of reneging on their NIL deal. They said they were going to pay me $100,000. Sluka says he only got $3,000. His agent claims that it was a handshake deal. Well, why don't you have a contract? Well, part of the problem is now we know, according to the collective, that Matt Sluka's agent's not registered in the state of Nevada, so they can't legally talk with him because he's not a registered operator in Nevada. Ah, uh, well, what, what about the dad? Well, the dad says that there was a deal in place. And Matt Sluka says there was a deal in place. So after weeks and weeks and months and months and asking and asking, and the Slukas say that they were told, oh, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, the money's coming, we're going to pay it, we're going to, it's, after three games, Matt Sluka is quit the football team and is going to enter the transfer portal in December. And he's going to take this year as a redshirt year. And there was never a contract in place. And then for their part, UNLV came out and did not hold back. UNLV Athletics right here. Matt Sluka's represent, representatives made financial demands upon the university and its NIL collective in order to continue playing. UNLV Athletics interpreted these demands as a violation of the NCAA's pay-for-play rules, as well as the Nevada state law. UNLV has conducted its due diligence and will continue to operate its program within the framework of NCAA rules and regulations, as well as Nevada state laws. But then there's the collective saying, we want to address the recent developments surrounding and his decision to redshirt. To clarify, there were no formal NIL offers made during Mr. Sluka's recruitment process. Additionally, friends of UNLV did not finalize or agree to any NIL offers while he was part of the team, aside from a completed community engagement event over the summer. As Blueprint Sports and Friends of UNL, UNILV, NIL, UNILV, get see. Okay, uh, we take our commitment very seriously. We would like to emphasize that we upheld all friends of UNILV contracts this season and have not defaulted on any agreements with Mr. Sluka. Our commitment to supporting rebel student athletes remains unwavering, and we are dedicated to maintaining the integrity of our programs. We wish Mr. Sluka all the best in his future endeavors. Signed UNLV, IL, Live Golf. Um, this is terrible. For everybody. Matt Sluka looks like somebody who is not refined or frankly not business savvy. UNILV looks like somebody that doesn't keep their word. And this is a bad name for NIL agents because the agent came out and said, um, yeah, they made us a handshake deal for $100,000. Uh, you're an agent, sir. How do you not have your guy under contract before he takes a step on campus? And then you got to wonder about good old Bobby Sluka, the father of Matt Sluka, told Adam Rittenberg and ESPN, they kept deferring. We don't know. You have to wait. Then it was like, we're going to give him uh, game checks. So we were like, okay, great. We didn't ask for a single dollar more. Sluka. That's living expenses weren't even covered. But again, I side with you and LV on this. You didn't have a contract. You had nothing in writing. It would be illegal for assistant coaches to tell Matt Sluka or any other player, hey, come here, we'll pay you $100,000. It's not how the game works. You get it in writing. And... Kids across the country are getting game checks, but they have it in writing. And I'll be honest with you, I don't feel bad for Bob and Matt Sluka. 
You made your bed. Hope it's comfortable. Sleep well. Because you did this to yourself. By not being a savvy business person, which is now what you all whined and complained about. It's required now. This is what you all wanted. You wanted the Wild West of NIL. Congratulations, Slukas. You got it. Not having a written contract for that $100,000 is unconscionable. If you are an agent, if you are a father, it is unconscionable that you would not advise Matt Sluka to have a contract. And if you are Matt Sluka, it is nobody's fault but your own. Because you know better than this. You were apparently at, you don't. You were at Holy Cross. Are you telling me you had no idea that you needed to have this financial agreement in writing? Yeah, you did. And you didn't do it because you were excited to go to Vegas and play football. And now you're not going to play football this year. You're going to redshirt. You're going to transfer. And we're never going to hear from you again. That's my guess because most guys that get in the portal, we never hear from them again. Mm -hmm. That's that's the overwhelming, pervasive track record of quarterbacks who transfer. It's very rare that you transfer under a cloud and succeed. This is not Bo Nix going to Oregon. That's not that's not what this is. Mm -hmm. And if you look at if you look at all of the guys who have Jade, the Jaden Dolores of the world, how did that work out for Jaden Delora? I don't know either because I haven't heard a word about him. Guys who transfer under bad business practices generally don't succeed in this world. And I don't feel sorry for this kid. And I maybe I'm the only one. And I'm I'm if, if that makes me play the heel here, fine, I'll play the heel. I don't feel bad for Matt Sluka this morning. Yeah, my interpretation of this whole thing was that it's just got NIL Wild Wild West written all over it. It's got, hey, assistant coach opened his mouth when he shouldn't have. Um, because that's the thing at the university level you're not going to get away from. It, and I agree with everything you said about the Slugas. 100% you made your bets, time to line it. But this situation was born out of someone saying, hey, come to UNLV, we'll pay you 100 Gs to do that. And I agree. It's not in contract. Like there's no way to enforce it. I, I'm hundred percent with that, but for college football, that's what this is. And, and that's the problem I have with it now. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> again, I don't feel bad for the, the Slukas, but I also don't feel bad for UNLV. Right. I mean, I, if you're, if you're an employee and you walk into the office and your boss isn't about to pay you, uh, then you probably wouldn't want to work either. So everyone giving this kid all this heat, I feel like is it's a little bit exaggerated. It's okay to say, yeah, you know what? Like he should know better. It should be in con like you should have got a contract. Yeah. Hey, that's cool. But but killing this kid over, you know, quitting on the football team and like, you know, being some terrible per like I think we take it a little bit too far, right? I think we took like the immediate reaction was like, oh, this dude's a terrible guy and he quit on his team because he was dare you. like like come on, dude. Like <laughs> Like, don't, don't, don't treat this kid like this. And then what did we all forget about the Cormani McLean experience at Colorado? Did we all forget Where about, is he? you know, did we all forget about other dudes who've hopped in the portal? Cause they didn't get their checks. Like, like, let's not kill this kid. It, you're only killing them because UNLV's having this cute little start where they haven't lost a game yet. And everyone's like, oh, well, they're going to the college football playoff. Okay, I'll see you in November when they've got three losses, and then we can kind of talk about about their prospects. So I just I don't want to I don't want to roast this kid, but I want to be fair about it. Uh, uh, an assistant coach at UNLV should not be saying these things in recruiting. It's completely inappropriate uh, to say that and then not be able to back it up. Number one. Number two. Yeah. Uh, let this serve as a as an absolute warning shot over the bow of any player who can garner that kind of bread due to, if it's not on paper, you're not getting paid. And I, this is, again, I guess this is the contract law show today. Like if <laughs> it's not on paper, it's not enforced. And if it is on paper, it is going to be enforced whether you like it or not. So, so that's kind of the hard part with this whole situation. And it's fitting that this quarterback UNLV, you know, NIL situation is taking place uh, inside of the you know Pac-12 expansion conversation, 
right? Because it, it, it's it's like, hey, UNLV's deciding to stay in the Mountain West. They got paid. Quarterback didn't get paid. Now the running back is redshirting and leaving. Like it, it's just a weird, you know, it's weird how all that played out. But but I I I, I part ways with people who are like, oh, this kid's a terrible person because he's not a terrible person. And I think Cormani McLean's a very interesting case study. Did you have you guys seen the stats he's putting up at at Florida? Oh, you haven't because he has no sortable stats this season. Oh, I, I, football I, team. I, I, I do not. And we've talked about this. I know I don't love NIL, but it's here. And if you're a football player and I don't care if you're a pop Warner player, or if you are a five star recruit, if you don't get a contract, you don't have and you are not entitled to anything. Agreed. Anything. And UNLV. I don't, I don't believe, and I will not believe for a second that coaches said, oh yeah, come here and we'll give you a hundred thousand dollars. I don't believe that because it's too easy to get caught. Yeah. And you have the U N I L V collective to do your dirty work for you. And, and this is what I think, you know, in the bigger picture, like there, there does need to be, you know, Charlie Baker put out you know, put out a statement yesterday, basically talking about how that's why they're working towards clarity on who's getting paid what and where that money comes from and what the agreement is. Because again, it's like what Kyle Whittingham said at Big 12 Media Days. We're heading toward an NFL minor league system. And part of being an NFL minor league system is knowing how much Shador is making to pay for that Rolls, right? Or to pay for that Lambo or knowing how much Arch Manning is making with that, you know, that pilot's card that he's got. But I, this is where where the 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 Barry Alexander situation at USC comes in. Right, right. Barry Alexander could have gone anywhere. He went to USC. Did you hear the news about Barry Alexander, the defensive tackle at USC? He is going to redshirt. He is not going to play another snap this year. Is he in the portal? Is he complaining about his money? No, you know what he's complaining about? Playing time. And you know what his dad said? We're going to do everything we have to do to get back on the field next year and be the disruptive, dominant player that we came here to be. And why is that so smart, if you think about it? That's so smart, and that's good business for him as a player and for their family. Because what's he going to do? He's obviously still going to practice. He's obviously still going to be part of the program. He's still going to be in that locker room every day. But what he's also going to do is he's also going to work his ass off to get stronger and to get better and to get faster and to get yeah. more capable so he can get on the field so he can ultimately make that money. Yeah. But the difference is, is dudes like that who are playing with all due respect to UNLV, who are playing at SC, who is now a Big Ten powerhouse brand, understand the opportunity in front of them. All right, let's get your comments rolling. Who do you side with, UNLV or Matt Sluka? Um, I'm happy to take your comments on, on the Pac-12 Mountain West situation. Oak State James for $5. If Texas State, UTEP, and or North Texas join the Pac-12, then I could drive to four conference games. Great show. Keep up the good work. Appreciate you, James. Good to see you. Thomas Reed for $5. Five-star players go to five-star schools. Most of D1 makes do with two or three-star development talent. You build a small program of solid three-star dudes. Yeah, and, and I think we're, we're seeing that play out at several programs right now. And the best power conference schools do not rely on five-star talent. Like what is why is Steve Sarkeesian so successful? Because he dominates with three star recruits that he turns into four and five star performers. And why is Texas as deep as they have ever been? Why is their transition to the SEC been so seamless? Because he's got so much talent at Texas. Why is Kyle Whittingham such a dominant force at Utah? Yes, because he takes a two star quarterback and turns him into a four and five star free safety, cornerback. Why is Makai Bernard a dominant force at running back? Because Utah turned him into a running back. Why is the BYU linebacker room always loaded? Look at Jaquindon Jackson at, at Arkansas. Jaquindon Jackson went from a quarterback at Utah to a running back at Utah to a stud running back at Arkansas. Because you take guys who aren't great at their chosen position and you turn them into elite performers at another position. That happens every year at Utah. It's it's just the way business is done. Uh, Ukrainian mail order bride industry is booming for $5. T 
TCU was let off the hook, but giving up 66 to SMU, TCU hasn't been the same since 65 to 7, just like Florida State hasn't been the same since 63 to 3. Spike Dykes' kid is in real trouble in Fort Worth. Sonny Dykes better figure it out because he's got the offense and he's got the talent there and they're not winning enough. And I think he is, his leash is getting shorter at TCU. And I understand that guys like Mr. Clean down in Waco don't get fired. I think TCU is not going to sit around and wait long. Right. I, I I think he needs to start winning now. Uh, Calford up to 25. Let's go. Nice Appreciate work. you. Nice work. Appreciate you. Uh, Coogs Johnson. This will be the first and last time like this happens in NIL history. Unfortunately, UNLV is going to end up being a question on sports jeopardy for the next quarter century. Yeah. I totally agree. Do we ever see Matt Sluka again? I think we will. He's shown a lot of ability. Oh, he's a good quarterback. Yeah. There's no question. Yeah. I I, I think that not this. I I, I mean, obviously he's going to redshirt till the portal opens back up in December. And then, you know, for now and early then, enrollee. Yeah. From now until then, he's going to have conversations to try to get somewhere. I think, you know, he is a little bit flammable right now, but I think if you're a, if you're a, a power team, if you're a power conference team, yeah, I'd bring him in. Just your backup. But where does I think he's a G5 player? Because he's not a prolific. He's a, he can throw the football. There's all these people yesterday. All he does is run. Who are you, Avery Johnson? He can actually. I'm sorry. I had to. Dude, I, bro. I, it, it, <laughs> dude, my bad. Still a little tender. My, okay. Um. Anyway, no, not doing it. The point is, he can actually throw the football. Yeah. So he can. Um, let's see who else. K. Nuren. Uh, UNLV did not win, and he didn't win. Hmm? Uh, Doctor Sean Douglas, Team Sluka. Really? Yeah. Who, what do you live on the second floor too? Really. My name is Sluka. My name is Sluka. <laughs> Tony Barber, Dyke's future is OC at Cal next year. Well, he was already the head coach at Cal, so shouty, hook him, Texas, going to run the SEC. We'll see about that. Stepanik, good morning. Hope you're feeling well. Uh, Ukrainian mail order bride says Calford legend. Exactly. Seriously. Right. Christopher Shannon, he's a scrub. Sluke is not a scrub. Uh, Eric Wasikowski, odds of MSU upsetting uh, slim and none. And none just walked out the door. <laughs> Michigan State's not talented. Michigan State is. Yeah, maybe Michigan Sluka State. Go there. Michigan State and Michigan are very similar. They are just woefully untalented right now. Michigan State is building. They are building. Uh, let's see. Thomas Reed, or back to FCS, he certainly could. Calford for $5. He should transfer to Southern Illinois and play for the Salukis. Yeah, right? The Salukas. Right. The Southern Illinois Salukas. See what he did there? You know. The Salukas. Uh, who cares if he is a G5 player? I'll take him at Iowa any day. Well, come on. Wow. You take me as the starting quarterback wow. at Iowa. Wow. You gonna pay him 100 G's too? Easily. Easily. Uh BYU and Utah to the Super League. I would agree with that. Tony Barber, Sluka to be a second string QB at Washington State or Oregon State next year. Wow. 